So it's big in our world today how we identify, what we identify as, who we identify with. How do you identify? How do you see yourself? Identity is important, isn't it? If you don't have your identity, your identification, you can't get on the airplane. If a policeman pulls you over and you don't have your license, your identification as a licensed driver, you'll have a bigger fine, a bigger problem. If your identity is not good, you can't travel to certain places. In fact, in the state of Washington, our identification will not work on federal national or international travel in the near future. It's not approved for those things. So you're going to have to have a passport or uh, some higher level of identification if you want to go certain places. And really, that's the story of life, isn't it? If your identity is not good, strong, positive, godly, you may be missing out on much that God has for your life because you just can't see yourself in that place. You can't see yourself in that way. So you don't even go for it. You You don't reach for it because your identity is not there. But if you can see God's will for your future, what God really has promised and God has planned for you, and if you can see yourself there, what would happen? Would anything change in your life? Would anything be bigger, better, stronger, more blessed? I think so for all of us. I think it's true. So tomorrow we start our week of prayer. So Monday through Saturday, we're going to pray every morning, 6 a.m. in the Federal Way Sanctuary, in the Mill Creek Sanctuary, and you can join in online, 6 a.m. Somebody said, why are you starting at 6 a.m.? We're going to get going before the devil is awake. He won't even know what hit him. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to use our identity devotional. Now, you may already have one of these. We gave them out in the Christmas services. You can get one on your way out of service today. They're free. Uh, The identity devotional, 31 days. It's scriptures, it's thoughts, it's some, some questions to help you apply the word of God in your life and move forward to a new year, not just another year, right? Don't just live your life on repeat. Don't just go through the same things over and over again, right? Don't have a vision to lose 10 pounds, Because as soon as you lose it, you got to gain it back so you can fulfill your vision to lose 10 pounds and then you gain it back and then you lose the pounds and then you get them back. You're stuck in a cycle. Some of you have lost 10 pounds a hundred times. Maybe you should know, I need a different vision. I need to see something different. I'm not going to try to lose weight. I'm just going to have a vision to be healthy. It's like getting out of debt. Some of you have gotten out of debt a dozen times, paid off the cards, got, and then right back in. Because your vision is to get out of debt, so you got to get back in debt so you can fulfill your vision, which is to get out of debt, and you've created a cycle because you're not thinking with God. You're not thinking with his promise and with his word. You're kind of following Twitter or something. You're following TikTok. And your tick has talked. It's over. Stop going through the same thing. You don't need to lose 10 pounds and you don't need to get out of debt. But if there's a promise from God and something that God has for you to take your life to a better place, that's the vision. And that's what we're going to be praying and that's what we're going to be believing for you and for our community and for our state for our church tomorrow. And in the back of our identity devotional, we give you three prayer outlines. Some of you have never prayed for an hour. You've never prayed for a half hour or even 15 minutes. And you're thinking, how in the world do you do that? Jesus said, in the Bible, by the way, the Lord said, could you not tarry one hour? 
could you not pray with me for one hour? Remember the disciples fell asleep and he said, come on, guys. Could you not pray with me for an hour? Well, maybe Jesus is saying that to you still today. Can you not pray one hour? So we're going to take an hour, but we're going to give you a prayer guide. Not just something to repeat, but something to follow. And tomorrow we'll start with the Lord's Prayer. And then one day this week we'll do the Tabernacle Prayer. That's a lot of fun. And then another time we'll do the Prayer of Jabez. So they're all in your identity devotional. And you'll have the steps to follow. And I promise, if you come, focus on the Lord, focus on prayer with us. When an hour's up, you will say, wow. That went fast. That went fast. In other words, you'll wish we could pray longer, and uh, it, it will be a great blessing in your life. So the idea is that who we are in Christ becomes clear. We begin to see what we've never seen. God gave you the ability to see. But you have to realize vision isn't a physical act. It's a mental act. You don't see with the lenses of your eyes. You see with your mind. So that's why two people can look at the same thing and see something totally different. You've all been through the exercise where you look at the picture and some people see one thing, some people see another thing. You don't see with your eyes. You see with your mind. So when I ask you, how do you see yourself, you have a picture in your mind. You have thoughts and ideas in your mind of who you are. Now, that might not be how I see you at all. I have found through the years, I've seen potential and gifting and calling in people, but they couldn't see it in themselves. So they couldn't move beyond their current circumstances. They were stuck in their problems, troubles, circumstances, whatever they were. Though I kept saying, look, there's more here. You have the ability. You have the talent. You have the calling. Look what God could do. If you can't see it, it doesn't matter what I see. And you know what? It doesn't matter what God sees. God could see you blessed. But if you don't see it, it's not going to happen. So what you see is what you get in life. So we've been trained how to think by our parents and maybe a church or a school system or whatever, and we start getting these pictures, these thoughts, these beliefs in our mind of who we are, and we embrace them, and they either lift us or limit us. So let me ask you this question. Does your identity... How you see you, does it lift you or limit you? Is it moving you forward or holding you down? Is it opening new horizons or causing you to think, I can't? If you say things like, I can't overcome this addiction, I can't get through this health problem, I can't be healed. I can't get out of debt. I can't find a good relationship. There's no good men left on planet earth. There's not one good woman left in my state. I've heard it all, right? If you start thinking with that, I can't and it won't work and you don't understand, and, but, but, for, but for me, it's right? People have all kinds of thoughts that identify you. Does your identity lift you or limit you? Because that's going to decide whether you have a new year or another year. Okay, I can hear you thinking now. A few of you are thinking, Pastor, I can't see that. I mean, get off it, man. It's up to the government. It's up to the governor. It's up to the pandemic. It's up to the, I can't even see. What you're talking about? Oh, I can't see that. What you can't see is the reason you're stuck. Because you keep telling yourself, I can't see it. It's amazing how we can look at the same things and not see it. So some people look at an 
economy and they see opportunity. They see new apps. They see new businesses. They see things that have never been done, and the next thing you know, they're prospering. Other people look at the same economy and say, I can't find a job. No one's hiring. And then if they hire, I can't get paid enough. I can't even make a living. I might as well stay on unemployment. Looking at the same thing, but seeing different things. You've, you've been there at home, right? Your husband comes home. He walks through the kitchen. He sits down to turn the game on, Monday night football. And you say, hey, did you see the garbage is full? There's two bags beside the can. The can is flowing over. It's obvious the garbage is full. He walked right by it, and you say, did you see the garbage is full? And what does your husband say? Oh, sorry, babe, I didn't notice. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. How can you not see it? It's obvious. Not looking that way. How could you not see how to be healed? Not looking that way. How could you not see how to prosper? Eh, not looking that way. How could you not see how to have joy in your marriage? I'm not looking that way. What I'm looking at is what my dad told me. Marriage ends in divorce. It's all, it happens to the best of us. You just have to accept it. You're looking at the wrong things. You keep getting the wrong results. So I'm watching the football game yesterday, college games. Guys are up, running up and down the field. One guy had an exceptionally good day, made tons of yardage. And the announcer said, he's a good running back because he has good vision. And I thought, no, he can run, man. He's fast. But if you don't have good vision, you don't know where to run. You don't know how to run. You don't know when to slow down, wait for your block. You don't know when the hole is going to open. You can't see. And some of you have all the talent in the world, but you just can't see where to run. What if you spent some time with God? You, you got into God's word. You, you took some time in prayer, and you began to open your eyes, and you began to see something you've never seen before. So I was 19 years old, and Julia said to me, Big Red, you can change. Julius was my mentor. He, he, he led the rehab center where I lived at that time. He said, you can change. And I said, I don't think I can, Jules. I don't think I can. What was I? I can't see my life changing. I can't see me doing anything different. I can't see me living any. I totally believed I was going to get through the rehab center and move back to Spanaway and get back to normal. My normal was poor, barely getting by, staying drunk, staying loaded, divorce disaster. That was my normal. The only part I didn't want was the going to jail part. That's why I stayed in the rehab center. But Julia said, you can change. Now, after a few weeks, I began to believe, what if I could change? What would change look like? What would my health look like? What would my relationships look like? What would my career look like? What would my life look like if it's true I can change. That was the beginning. Next thing I know, I'm in Bible school. That same time I met Wendy. We're off talking about ministry life. Four years later, we started Christian faith. 42 years ago was our first Sunday morning on January New Year's. You can change. What if you could change your health? What if you could change your marriage where it's like fun and happy and joyful? What if you could change your spirit where it was peaceful and not depressed? What if you could change your career where you made more money than you knew what to do with and had fun doing it? What if? Well, Pastor, I can't see how that's ever going to happen. I know. Right now you can't see. 
But what if you and God spent some time together and he could open your eyes? In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, if your eye is good, your life will be full of light. You read it? You see it? Remember, if you go in the church app, go to the media page, open the notes. All these scriptures are there for you. You can look at them, meditate on them all week. Matthew 6, the lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is good, your whole body or your whole life will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole life will be full of darkness. So your vision is controlling your future, how you see it. Well, I just can't see me getting through this pandemic. That's a bummer. Because now you've given control of your life over to something that's become a political issue and a health issue and a job issue, and you've taken control out of your heart and out of God's hands. Well, I just can't see how I'll ever get a raise on this job. My boss never going to give me a raise. Okay, who put your boss in charge of your life? God and you begin to see something new, and the Lord will change the boss, move the boss, kill the boss, do whatever he's got to do with the boss. Hey, if you're God, it's legal. (laughs) God will put you in a new place, take you to a new, God will do something if you could just begin to see. Well, I can't see how that's ever going to work. All right, stay there then. Stay where you are, have another year, don't bother having a new year, because what you see is what you get. You know, right church? You believe it. Now, let me show you a fun story, Jesus interacting with a man in Bethsaida. It's in Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 22, Jesus came to Bethsaida, and they brought to him a blind man. So in the natural, he can't see. Now, you and I know many blind people have been able to see amazing things. Helen Keller could see amazing things. Stevie Wonder saw and heard amazing things. Ray Charles saw amazing things. So you can be blind in the natural and still have great vision. My friend Julius, who I always talk about, hopefully not too much, he got glaucoma over his eye. He only had one eye that was real. The other eye was glass, and and glaucoma covered it. So for a couple years of his life, we had to hold him, and and we would walk with him and be careful because he couldn't see at all, and, and he would run into things. You know, he was totally blind. We drove him everywhere. We took care of everything because he couldn't see. Glaucoma totally covered his eye. And then we found a doctor who said there was uh, uh, some help in the medical world, and he was able to see again. But Julius never lost his vision, though he had lost his sight. What's worse, losing your sight or never having a vision? We can see, but we're not looking at nothing. I can see, but all I see is darkness, sickness, poverty, lack, problems, politics, junk in the world. What, the, what good is vision if all you look at is negative stuff, right? So Jesus is talking to a blind man, and they ask him if he would touch him. In verse 23, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. Isn't that interesting? Before I can help you, I got to get you out of your comfort zone. I got to get you away from your environment. Maybe, maybe this year means you getting to a new environment, new relationships, a, a, a place where you're not just stuck. And people assume you are what you are, but people can believe something new for your life. And by the way, don't be the person that others have to get away from so their life can get better. 
Thank you for your exciting response. If you're the one that people have to get away from so they can get positive, so they can get healthy, so they can start eating better and praying more and walking with God, that's a bummer. Be the one that brings the light. Don't be the one that, co- that holds the darkness. So Jesus, Jesus takes the guy out of town. And then he spit on the guy. You ready for that? Would you let the Lord spit on you? He spit on the guy. Man, he's really pushing him outside of the comfort zone. Why would he spit on him? Obviously, spit has no healing powers. But Jesus is saying, are you ready for something different? It's going to be uncomfortable. It's, it's going to be weird. Are you ready to change? And then he put his hands on him, and he asked him if he saw anything. I think that's a significant question. Do you see anything? Tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., we're going to be in prayer. We're going to be focusing on the Lord. We're going to be asking God to work in our new year. And God comes to us. Just imagine, and God says, do you see anything? Well, I, my husband ain't going to change. Everybody knows he's hard head. I mean, he ain't going to change. And my boss, I mean, you know how he gets. And I, I mean, this pandemic thing is crazy. I don't know what's going on out there. And do you see anything? Well, I'm just hoping, you know, maybe I can get ahead a little bit and maybe something, maybe something, something, maybe something will happen. I, do you see anything? At the front of our devotional, uh, the team created a little worksheet, vision worksheet. I see a healthy life. I see peace that passes understanding. I see family whole. These are things that I wrote down. So if the Lord stopped me and says, do you see anything? I would be like, this is what I see, Lord. This is what I see. But for most people, they're just seeing maintenance. They're, they're seeing survival. They're, they're seeing the struggle. They don't see the victory. So take some time and answer the Lord. Because in the Bible, he asks you a question. Do you see anything? Yes, I see a new job. I see a better position. I see more opportunity. I see increase. I, I, I see blessing on my marriage. I see fun. I see joy. I see happiness with my children. I see things that I've not experienced yet, but I can see them because I'm walking with you, Lord. Well, then he looked up and the man said, I see men like trees walking. So when the Lord asked him, he said, well, I'm seeing something, but it's not clear. I kind of see men like trees. It's like they're in a fog. I I don't see clearly. I see that there's something happening. I see there's something out there. I see that there's things ahead, but I can't see clearly. Maybe that's where you are. Many of us, I think, have ideas of what God wants to do and and dreams of what we would like to see in our life, but it's not clear. It's kind of foggy. Look what Jesus did. Jesus put his hands on his eyes again. Put his hands on his eyes again. Prayed for him again. I think it's the only place in the Bible where Jesus prayed for the same thing twice. I mean, normally you just touch Jesus, boom, shakalaka, it's over. But this time, twice. What does that mean? To me, it means to see clearly is so important. Jesus will help you pray with you again. Put his hands on you again to see what's in your future, to see what's in your family, to see what God could do in your life, to see a good vision for tomorrow. And then the Lord asked him, look up. 
And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. So, what do you see? And do you see clearly? Let's take the time. Let's write some things down in our identity devotional. Let's pray together. Even if you can't be here, let's get online together and pray. And then if you skip out and you're watching news while we're praying, I won't even know because you're at home and you'll have your mute on. But what if you began to see clearly? What if your vision got healed, your eye, your internal, the eyes of your heart got healed? What if? I'm telling you, you would not have another year. You would have a new year. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we see for our church. I, I, I think some people kind of feel like, you know, church just kind of bumps along and kind of happens if, if, if everything works out. And most churches don't really grow and don't really go far. But we believe God has a vision, has a plan for Christian faith to grow and prosper and increase and impact. That's what we see. When I say we, I'm talking about our leadership team. In Matthew 16, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hell's not going to win, church. We win. And we're not just trying to escape and get to heaven. We're here to fight. We're here to build. We're here to do things for God and make a difference in our world. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Church isn't supposed to be some little little group just hanging on, scared of the world, hoping the devil doesn't get them. No. We're the glorious church in Ephesians chapter 5. A glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And in Ephesians chapter 1, we are the head, the church, his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. So that's our thinking, that God is growing his church. You know, we've been having 100 people a week being born again, filled with the Spirit, getting baptized, coming in to our church. Let's impact. Let's make a difference. If, if you're looking for a church that's just hanging on until Jesus comes, there's probably one closer to your house. And maybe we need the space. Right? We, we want to see blessing and growth and increase and, and God prospering his church. We want to have a better year than Boeing, Microsoft, Google, all the rest of the businesses. Why should not the church be better, be bigger, be stronger? Only because we never saw it before. We never had a vision for it. A lot of people always want to go to a church, you know, that has a, a parking place close to the door. I hope you have to park across town to get in our church. I hope you have to come an hour early to get in our church someday. Why? Because there's so many people hungry for God. Let's believe. We see people coming to Jesus and becoming more like Jesus. We see a church growing and prospering. We, we see our church with many campuses to impact communities all over our state. We see leadership that grows to lead worship. Come on, we need you worship leaders who haven't let us know that you have that gifting. We need teachers, tracks classes, membership classes, all the ministries of the church for many campuses. We see God bringing up leadership. We see all cultures, all nationalities, all races serving God together, loving God together, loving each other as Jesus loves us. In other words, we're not the white church or a black church, or a Hispanic church, or a Russian church, or a Korean church. We're a Jesus church. We're a godly church. 
Come on, if you want to be a part of a church that only looks like you, there's a lot of them. But if you want to be a part of a church that looks like our world, the same world that God loves, that's our vision. That's our dream. So I believe what we see, we will move toward. And in my lifetime or in the next generation's leadership or the next generation after that, who cares what else we got to do? That's the vision. That's what we see. And that's what we're moving toward. Now, what do you see for your life? How do you see yourself? I just want to say, before I forget, the person who says, I'm happy the way things are, that's the smallest and most selfish thing you can say. Why don't you say, I'm going to double what I have and give it away? I'm going to impact my world like I never have. It's not a, from now on, it's not about me. I got everything I want. From now on, it's all to give. It's all to serve. It's all to impact my world for Christ. Let's not think small. Let's not think survival. Let's see what God could do with our lives that maybe is way out of the box. Maybe it's way beyond what we'd ever thought before. If you think small, you live small. If you think big, you live big. And God can do amazing things with one who will see big things. Let me show you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new. Now, obviously, it's not a physical change. You didn't, you didn't become new physically. If you were 20 when you got saved, you were 20. If you were 50 or 60 when you got saved, you are. But in your heart, new opportunity, new doors of life, new energies, new passions, new anointings from God are to all who come to Christ. So the average person who gets saved, not much changes in their life, but everything could change. When I got saved, I was in a house, a rehab center, and there were dozens of people there. And most of them went back to the streets and went back to their life and went back to what was normal to them. For me, I went to a whole new normal. I went to a whole new world, a whole new way of life because I believe this is true. If anyone is in Christ, old things pass away. So what my mom and dad said, well, you'll never be good at that. You can never do that. That'll never work for us. We're not that way. You know who we are. We are poor people. That's what my parents would say. We're poor people. We're not like rich people. Now, I didn't know what rich people were like, but I knew we were supposed to be poor. But then I became a Christian and I read the Bible and it said, old things pass away. Oh, so I'm not a poor person? No, you are what God says you are. You have the potential and the power and the opportunity that God put in your life. Stop following your mama and start following your father. Stop following your traditions Stop living in your past. Well, we've always been this way. Who cares? All things become new. New opportunity, new open doors, new potential. Yeah, well, my people, we're going to go racist. Let's get racist now. You want to be racist? Okay, I'll get racist with you. Well, my people can't do that. Well, I don't know who your people are, but God's people can and God ha has said he loves all people, and he's offered the same for all people, and God does not see male nor female, Jew or Gentile. God said it's all for you. The thing is, can you see it? Or oh, I just can't see how that's going to work. Okay, then you can't have it. But if you ever decide, I'm going to see the promise, I'm going to see the blessing, I'm going to see what God sees. I'm going to see with the eyes of faith. 
I'm going to see with the eyes of the Spirit, your life will change. You'll grow. You'll find new, amazing opportunities. It's, it's, it's supernatural, but it's real. In Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, the Bible said, I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That's what God's thinking. He has a future for you. He has hope for you. He has peace for you. Now, will you go for it? Will you reach for it? Will you accept it? Will you take it? God's thoughts about you are good. But what do you see? Because your identity is controlling how you live, how you see yourself. It's controlling how you live. And in our world today, we know this because we use that word a lot. I identify. I identify as. How do you identify? Do you identify as a poor person or a rich person? Do you identify as a happy person or a depressed person? Do you identify as a successful person or a struggling person? What do you identify with? How do you identify? Do you identify as under the circumstances or overcoming the circumstances? Do you identify as growing and improving or surviving and struggling? What, how do you identify? Like if someone says to me, well, pastor, I know you're a pastor, so I know, you know, you, you're kind of like a monk. Your life is small. You, you're poor. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to identify in that way. That's not me. You obviously don't know me. You don't know my name. How do you? I don't identify like that, right? But that's what many people think I should be. But I don't take their vision. I have a vision from God. I have a vision that God sees. How, what do you see? Well, I'm just trying to go to work, pay the bills, Pastor. I mean, you're all fired up up there and all that. But, I mean, I'm just trying to pay the bills. Okay, that's what you see. You live to pay the bills. When you get before God in heaven, the Lord's going to say, how would you do? And you're going to be like, hey, I paid the bills. Come on, man. Rise up. Look up. Stand up. Reach up. Get a vision that's beyond where you are and see what God could do in your life. All right, I'll just give you a few things. I'm all out of time. But here's what God sees for you. Now, you can take it if you want it. Or you can have a reason why it won't work, right? You can say like, well, pastor, if you knew my husband, I mean, really? You can take it if you want it. This is what God sees for you. Number one, we are right with God. Scriptures are in your notes. We are right with God. We're the righteousness of God. No shame, no guilt, no condemnation, no unforgiveness, no past that you should be ashamed of. You are right with God. Number two, you have peace with God. You and God are good. Peace. And peace includes prosperity. Number three, your family is blessed because God said he will help you and your household. Your kids, your family are blessed. Number four, we financially prosper because the Bible said God gives us the power to get wealth. Well, you say, Pastor, that doesn't work. I mean, my family's always been poor. Come on, man. That's what I'm saying. You got to see something new. You got a new family in heaven, you have a new father. In God, and he has a new plan for your life. Who are you going to believe? Your past or the promise of God? That's your vision, and your vision is your future. Number five, we promise health and long life. Well, Pastor, you know the percentages. No, but I know the promise. God promised health and long life. Sometimes we struggle with our health on earth. Wendy and I have been there. The hepatitis and the cancer and all the drama, the pneumonia, all the stuff. 
We fight the COVID. We fight whatever it is. But our promise from God is health and long life. And we believe that. We see that. We have a vision for health and a long life. How do you identify? Strong, healthy, generous, happy? What do you see when you think of yourself? I'm praying today your vision is from God. Your vision is from the Bible. Your vision is not from a negative world. I'm praying today that you begin to see new things in the new year. You begin to see greater opportunities, bigger frontiers, mountains to move or to climb that are beyond what you've ever seen before. I'm praying today you don't have another year, but you have a new year. And you're on your way to new things with the Lord. Before we go, I want to pray for you personally. I want to pray that you really know this relationship with God, born of his spirit, filled with his spirit. Sitting in church doesn't make you a Christian. It's being born again. It's having that relationship with God. And so we want to pray for you and uh, help you in that first step. And then we have gifts to give you to keep you moving forward. One prayer won't change everything, but it could be the beginning for everything to change in your life. I prayed this prayer 46 years ago at the Mill Creek campus, and everything began to change. So if I could pray with you today, would you lift up a hand? I'm not going to put you on the spot. I just want to see you. I want to add my faith to yours. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, great. Thank you. I got you. Awesome. Thank you. Mill Creek, you reaching out? Lift up a hand. We're going to add you in our prayer. And if you're online, we hope you will pray with us too. All right, good. You can put your hands down. Let's pray together. Today, Father, just say it out loud with me, church. Be my prayer team. Today, Father, I believe Jesus is Lord. I identify with Christ. I believe I am who you say I am. I can do what you say I can do. I have a new vision of a new life because I am in Christ. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. Stand up with me. Let's make it a great year. Let's see what God sees for us. And we're happy to have you as part of our Christian faith family. We're going to go together and do some great things for the Lord. Amen.